Hey, hi, hello. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm just going to be reflecting on and kind of talking about my first semester at Princeton. But I have a wig that I just made and then I kind of needed to straighten. So I was like, boom, okay, let me do them at the same time. So it's kind of going to be get ready with me for tomorrow, which is Christmas, because I'm prepping my wig. So I'm just going to be straightening my hair and kind of reflecting on the past, what has it been, like three or four months? So right now we're on Christmas break and um, this has really been like a pivotal time for me because it's given me like brain space so that I can actually look back on the time that I've spent at Princeton. And if I had to like summarize my time here so far, I think, I, don't, I can't really think of an adequate adjective for it apart from like an adjustment. And it wasn't really an academic adjustment. It was more so of a social adjustment, um, an adjustment to a different location, an adjustment to different demographics at my school, and just an adjustment to a different period in my life. Um, in terms of academia, I didn't really struggle. I mean, we have our finals when we go back. To school but I really enjoyed my classes like that was something I knew I was going to do from the jump I was not going to force myself to take classes that I think a typical Princeton student should take or what I think I should take for my major because I'm not even sure about what I want to do um, 100% so I generally just scroll down like the class list and chose classes that actually interested me so um, I ended up taking like a neuropsychology class for my freshman seminar, um, African American history since emancipation, gender and sexuality and intro to gender and sexuality in Spanish. And one thing I really liked was that my classes overlapped. So I really got an interdisciplinary um, approach toward all of the subjects that I was doing because if we were talking about something like racial bias or intersectionality in and of itself, it would pop up in all three of my classes. And then the psychological implications of how one navigates the world would like come up in all three of my classes. So that was pretty cool. And I've been learning a lot in Spanish, like, whew, even though I'm in the intro class. I've learned more in high, um, college Spanish than I've learned in my four years of high school. So it's because I take it every single day. And that's kind of one reason why I didn't really like this semester too, is that I had Spanish every single day at 9 a.m. And it's not even that I'm not a morning person because I definitely can get up if I need to, but just knowing that you don't have the time to necessarily do what you want to do in the morning, like get up and always shower or always just have that kind of brain space and know that you have the time to do what you want to do. And sometimes all-nighters are going to come up and it's really hard to pull an all-nighter when you have a 9 a.m. class every day. And it's just very mentally and physically draining. So that kind of made me more pessimistic towards the semester after a while because it just got really hard to get up in the morning every single day for my 9 a.m. class. I'm just gonna ignore that um so yeah okay I may or may not edit this part out and make it seem like I actually have my life together I don't know only time could tell you know. okay that's probably gonna happen a couple times throughout the video so like deal with it please anymore um yeah that's just were really what made me kind of more pessimistic towards the whole semester because I just hate getting up at 9 a.m. every day. And then my teacher, my professor, <laughs> my professor would just send us homework to do at like 10 at night or 11 at night, be like, print this, oh, fill out this worksheet. Like, what? That's very inconsiderate. I would never email them at two in the morning asking them um, for an extension or something. So I don't feel like it's fair for them to assign work at 11, 12 at night. So, yeah, the wee hours of the morning, and then I'm gonna see you at 9 a.m. and you want the stuff done, it's just not gonna happen. So, I just didn't like that. Um, 
In terms of like campus diversity, that has also been like a difference for me because I've come from a high school where my school was predominantly like me and I was extremely comfortable because there were there are just things that don't have to be said when you're with other people who know your own culture because you share that same racial experience or like cultural experience and coming here and not having that same instant connection with people has been um, kind of weird but it definitely is a learning experience and it actually hasn't been that bad it's just an adjustment just like everything else is in college um in terms of my living situation yeah i really came in here thinking it would be pivotal for me to have like roommates it's not i just want to single for the rest of my um college career because this roommate stuff is not working out like i go to bed really late and all my roommates go to bed at like 10 o'clock the latest so it just doesn't work out and i just don't like having to share my place of solace with somebody else like if i want to shower and i don't want to like put on my clothes immediately or if i want to play my music or if i don't want the light on or if i want to study now or if i want to put my book somewhere like you have to compromise because you are living with somebody else and you don't want to inconvenience them so yeah i just don't want to have to deal with all that I just, yeah, no, this living situation is not for me. And then there's just some stuff that like my roommate did that I just really didn't like. I just felt like she wasn't respecting my personal belongings. And I'm just not with that. Like, I'm not trying to deal with that the rest of my four years. So I want to get a quingle, which is like um, either four, it's a quad, but you all have four, it's four singles in the room. So basically you have a single. I would really like that because I can like always retreat to my room whenever I want to or I can socialize with my roommates because I still do have roommates or just have a single by itself. So overall the semester has been okay but there are definitely some things I want to change. I want to go back in with a positive attitude, like a more positive attitude and I like what well, something that's really been bothering me is finding my calling in life and everybody says you're only a, like college freshman and you have a lot of time to decide but when you have all this impending pressure to like secure internships and to like start doing things like I don't know starting a blog about um your calling in life or like your passions or whatever how am I supposed to have the time to truly discover who I am and who I want to be and what I want to do if there are all these prerequisites that I'm supposed to already be fulfilling in order to take me to that place you know like I don't really understand how that works so it's been like a battle for me between choosing classes that I want to do and then choosing classes that I think that I should do given the um, university that I'm at and then choosing clubs that I want to do and choosing extracurriculars that I think would be beneficial in helping me wean out majors if that makes any sense so just I'm gonna try and go in next semester um, really just focusing a lot more on my own personal development and my own happiness um in terms of like eating and stuff i don't know the food it's not as bad as i thought it was going to be but towards the end where we were getting closer and closer to winter break they definitely started slacking i was like oh this is disgusting like i really at like probably one meal um a day for like the week and a half before winter break. Oh my gosh, it keeps coming. Oh, look. Ah! Okay, why is my hair wet? <sighs> so this is what the YouTubers don't show you, like the struggle. Cause I'm definitely struggling out here. If anybody wants to get me the wig stand that actually stand is mounted on the floor, for Christmas, by all means. Oh my god, good golly. Okay, boom. On campus, I'm involved with this club um, called Woke Wednesdays. And basically what we try to do is like highlight the minority voices on campus and just really facilitate unfiltered conversation about various topics, maybe like um, one of our topics in our video was about CPS, which is our 
kind of health, mental health resource on campus and kind of the things that it's been doing well and the things that it can improve on. Okay, we're just about to do it without the stand because I'm clearly struggling. But, um, and out of those videos, I've been getting like a lot of, um, well, the club entirely, but definitely um, towards these black members, there have definitely been like more racially charged comments, negative comments that have been really alarming. But I mean, I kind of knew to expect this, especially with some of the comments that I've gotten on my own channel, that whenever you as a person of color, especially a black person, um, choose to talk about controversial topics or just talk about anything in general, the racists are gonna have something to say. You know, you could go through my videos. I mean, I delete a lot of the worst ones, but some of them are still there. And a lot of them, some of them is latent racism, others, they just don't care. And I've noticed that racist people really like, they don't think through their insults. Like a lot of the time it doesn't make sense. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> So just having that on top of like my own academic and um, personal and just social obligations, like it's been a lot. Um, it hasn't really, I don't know, at first, I don't know if it has affected me a lot because I definitely do think about it um, and it does weigh on my mind, obviously more than if it hadn't occurred at all. but. I know that it has affected other people in our club more so I'm just kind of grateful that I have like a level head and was I kind of knew that this was happening but it's not fair at all and even with I believe his name is David Hogg the boy from the March for Our Lives movement who just got accepted to Harvard but he was waitlisted to UCF, which is actually one of our state schools. And he has like a 1260 or 1280 SAT. I don't know, that whole like situation has really brought to the foreground just the hypocrisy of how people look at black students especially, because you don't really hear any other demographics getting vilified as much as black students do when they get into prestigious universities. like. Asian students are basically praised for getting in or like anytime a black student comes in, you can even see it on my videos, they're like, oh, you took the spot of an Asian person who was supposed to get in. Oh, I bet if she was Asian, she wouldn't have gotten in or like somebody else with better scores deserves to be there. It's always becomes like a black and white issue, like a polarized race issue and that's really not fair for black students. And he didn't have the scores I know in my last video people are talking about my scores are way below mid-range, but his are, if mine are way below, his are in the pits of hell. And I just don't think that that's fair, that there's not the same outrage that he got into the school as there is for other black um, students. And many people are desensitized to the fact that a lot of black students are living in similar situations to what occurred at the Parkland shooting every single day. They're witnessing gun violence, experiencing gun violence, have lost numerous relatives to gun violence, and I just don't think it's fair for their accomplishments to be diminished. But then when somebody who experiences a school shooting has way lower scores, and then even though they did, I'm not going to take away from their movement, the March for Our Lives movement was definitely great and necessary and was amazing in and of itself. There are other black students who are doing equally as amazing things who aren't getting as much coverage or who aren't getting as much media support, you know? Like now these kids are the face of the movement and the face of um, like political change among the youth, you know? And that's not fair for like activists in Ferguson, black activists in um, Flint, Michigan, you know, like we don't see those students and we wouldn't give, well I would, but a lot of people wouldn't give them the same support for getting into prestigious schools if they had the same scores as they are giving the Parkland shooting survivors, you know. 
but that's not to take away from the fact that he has accomplished a lot and getting into Harvard is a great feat, you know, but I just want to um, really talk about how I resonate with the black and brown students who are bringing this hypocrisy to light because all of my accomplishments have been diminished, but who's to say that I haven't also had pretty vivid experiences with gun violence that are still traumatizing to this day. Um, just like the Parkland um, shooting survivors, but I'm being vilified for getting into this institution. I took the spot away from a um, deserving student who had higher scores, but somebody with way lower scores than me with a different color skin is all the more deserving, you know? So yeah. Um, other than that, Princeton has been better than I expected it to be. I definitely came in thinking that it was just going to be, oh, oh my gosh, I'm going to hate it here. And I actually don't hate it. You know, there are definitely some things that I really do not like. Some things that I really wish to change throughout my four years. Y'all stay updated. <laughs> big things, big things. But listen, I'm struggling now. I done lost the part that I was in in my hair. Whatever. But there are also some great opportunities at this institution, and that is undeniable. Nobody can take that away. Just being a black girl, um, and uh, somebody, I know somebody's gonna talk about, oh, she always talking about race. Because literally, I'm not just a girl. Like, the first thing people see is my skin color. And that has really changed the way that I navigate the world, especially in university. Not only on the internet with people telling me I don't deserve to be here every single day, to just the way people address me on campus and look at me on campus and assume things about me on campus and in the world in general, but especially um, in college. So I'm gonna talk about that. But yeah, just being a black girl with a Princeton degree, people look at you differently because they don't even expect me to go to college. You know, like even when at my um, internship with Bank of America, when people heard that I was going to Princeton, they treated me completely different than before. Like before I was invisible, but afterwards everybody wanted to talk to you because they think that you can benefit them. But yeah, I'm just kind of adjusting to that. And I also started journaling. Like I'm actually really excited for that. Um, to maybe look back on my own journey and like be able to say, hmm, what was I doing on April 23rd in 2019? And be able to look back to that date and see like read how I was feeling, who I met that day, what I was talking about, what I did, you know. And I started it mainly because I'm all over the place. Like one day I say I'm passionate about this, the next I think it's something else. And I really just wanted to track my passions and see if there are any trends because I feel like that would kind of give me some clarity in terms of what I'm supposed to do in life. So just being able to have that kind of catalog down and at my own disposal it's gonna be really cool but yeah I also made a vision board for 2019 which is something I've never done before but I'm hoping to make it like an annual ritual and it came out super duper cute mainly what I want is just peace prosperity and better health because ever since I stopped running track I've been eating like crazy and that's another thing um Princeton there's always free food like I joined the free food listserv and it's the best and worst thing ever because I haven't been working out as much like outside of um, cheerleading and like our conditioning compared to how much I did in high school with like track and softball. And I'm really trying to get back to that. So not only do I want to be mentally healthy, but also physically healthy um, in 2019. It. So yeah, I don't know. college has not been that bad. I know that it definitely could have been worse. Um, I'm just gonna be so excited when I get these finals out the way. Like, I, it sucks that we take our finals after winter break. Like, you can't even relax at home because I'm thinking about the papers I have to do, the exams I have to take when I get back to campus. So that sucks. But aside from that, I'm really happy to be back. I feel like I wouldn't have been able to reflect on my Princeton experience so far if I hadn't come back. Like I was definitely getting really sad up there because just the cold weather, just the change in people, the campus, because the 
Trust and Bumble is really real. Like once you step foot on campus, you have to make a conscious effort to get off because it is so hard. You get so consumed in your work, your extracurriculars. And then aside from that, any extra time you have, you're trying to sleep. So you really have to like plan out the time that you have to go and travel. And that's something I really wanted to do because New York is right there. Public transportation in New Jersey is way better than it is in Florida. And I just haven't been taking advantage of that. So I hope to do that when I return to campus too. But yeah. So this is the wig I made. I actually just finished making it literally 30 minutes ago. It's a 20 inch um, frontal wig. I make wigs, y'all. So if you ever want one, I got y'all. Pretty low though. Um, yeah, I like making wigs. It's therapeutic. And I just don't like the way that other sellers construct their wigs. And my dad always tells me, like, if you want something done, do it yourself because nobody's going to do it better than you. And I just really like having that agency over how ooh, my hair looks and how it's constructed. I know if it looks bad, it's my fault. I can't blame anybody else but me. So yeah, having that kind of responsibility and then just um, time away from like social media too, because that will suck your life up. Oh my gosh. The amount of time I spent on social media used to be outrageous. But I'm glad that um monitoring myself a lot more and I definitely am not as addicted as I used to be and my class is like my psychology neuro class it's called the landscape of thought I actually played a big part in that like each week we have different thought experiments or had because the class is over now we just take our final and one of the um, for one of the weeks we had to do a social media diet we could not have any social media whatsoever and we couldn't text anybody because I kind of did social media we could only call people and that really made me realize how it's kind of like instinctive to grab your phone in awkward situations or just like out of impulsive tendencies to just check what's going on so that really made me realize like girl you gotta chill so ever since then I've just been more cognizant of how much time I spend on social media and I'm really trying to get into photography so I feel like that's a good way to get outside and just do what I gotta do you know so yeah um, I'm definitely gonna re-straighten this when I actually apply it I'll probably do another um, video video with me actually like wearing the wig probably styling it Cause I really like wigs. I'm getting into makeup too. I actually just ordered some actual eyeshadow palettes. Cause if you know me, you know I'm super cheap. So I just got like this 30 or 40, 35 color um, shade palette off of Amazon. And it was cheap, it was dusty, but I was like, I'm just a beginner. Why am I gonna spend some big money on the real thing if I don't even know if I'm like, gonna be good at this for one and gonna stick with it for two like I just kept it to practice but now I've actually progressed a lot more so your girl needs the real thing so we're investing in ourselves all 2019 you hear me so yeah comment down you guys is like 2019 resolutions I want to read it ah but yeah that's basically how my first semester has been um I'm definitely going to be more active when I get back to campus because I won't have a 9 a.m. every day and I won't be drained. So I'll be able to record like get ready with me and actually do stuff um, before my classes because my first class is going to be at 11 a.m. So I'll just be living my best life next semester. But this semester was not bad. Um, we'll see how my grades are. I kind of have an idea of how they're going to be anyway. I'm really happy with my classes and my professors and how everything worked out, my friends, you know, that's cool. <laughs> so I hope to speak to y'all soon. Yeah, that's all for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, you can leave um, suggestions in the comment box down below. Bye, y'all.